Okay, we're dealing with question number one from the 2012 AP Physics B exam. This is a primary mechanics problem. Uh, we have a block, a big block of mass 2 kilograms is pulled along a horizontal table by a force of 15 newtons, which is applied by pulling on a light string over a pulley. Uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the surface is given. And on the dot uh, here, we want to basically do a free body diagram acting on the big block as being pulled across the table. Uh, the block has weight. Fg, or you can write little mg. It's got the turf. The surface is supporting it, so there's a normal force upward. Capital N, F sub N, whatever. Uh, we have a rope pulling it to the right. Tension, and we do have a friction force opposing it. I do believe it's appropriate to have that friction force smaller than your tension because it is accelerating. Um, at the very least, it, I think it'd probably be okay if it was larger, or not larger, equal. It's just not okay if it's larger. And so this one's only worth two points. Basically, you're going to get one point for including the y values properly. And you're going to get one point for including your x values properly. And you got to label them all, too. You can't just have arrows. Two-pointer. B, now, we want to know the magnitude of the acceleration of the block. Uh, that is best done by looking at a dynamics analysis or applying Newton's second law. We're going to say the net force acting on the block is indeed positive or greater than zero, so MA. And that indeed does come from uh, the difference between the two forces in your X dimension. And that's going to be the tension minus that friction force. And so your acceleration is the tension minus the friction force divided by m. Well, the tension is easy. We've got that 15 newtons. It's the friction force that we've got to address. And you may recall that the friction force of any object is equal to mu fn. In this case, that mu is going to be mu sub k. And I wrote my fn as n, so um, I would probably be more appropriate to write mu n. n, if you see in my diagram here, is equal to the weight of the block. So really, the friction force is mu k the weight times the weight of the block, which is mg, big mg. I'm only going to use big m because I know later on I'll be using big m. I guess that means this is big m as well. And so I'm going to rewrite this and combine it all together. I like to merge my equations into one in case I can cancel variables out. Tension minus mu k big mg, all of that divided by big m. And so if I plug in appropriately, I'm going to have 15 newtons minus 0.25 times 2 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. All of that divided by 2 kilograms. Go ahead and type this into my calculator. And I am getting a value of 5 meters per second squared. Now, if you use g as 9.81, you would get a slightly larger value, I do believe. Yes, slightly larger value. And b was worth 3 points. Now we're going to kind of change the scenario slightly. Instead of it being an applied force, of 15 newtons, it's going to be a block hanging there. And so now we're going to attach, attach this little block of 1.5 kilograms to uh, the pulley. And now, again, we're going to release it all from rest. Yada, yada. We want to know the acceleration of this little block. Well, if you recall or understand from your dynamics of a pulley system, all objects attached to that pulley system will accelerate together at the same rate. You can't have this block accelerate at a different rate than the big block or else the rope would snap. So, uh, if you can remember that, go ahead and reapply Newton's second law here. Your net force acting on the entire system is MA. Well, that M is both the mass of the big block plus the mass of the little block times their overall acceleration which does come from, well, you know, it doesn't matter which one we solve for. If we solve for the big block or the little block, 
I'm going to go ahead and maybe uh, treat the big block as my situation here because that force to the right is that downward force, um, not downward force due to gravity, which is actually the upward force of the tension here supporting that little block. And uh, ultimately, it's going to equal that tension to the right minus that friction force. It's a lot, very much like part B, but we need to add that additional mass here, which means everything's going to accelerate just a little bit less. So my acceleration is going to be tension minus, well, the FF is still mu, uh, mu sub k, big MG, because that's the thing experiencing the friction. This little block hanging is not experiencing friction. All of that divided by the quantity of the two masses, big M plus little m. And so we're going to have my tension... Uh, as I already said out loud over here, it's equal to the weight of the little block, little mg. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that in as 15 newtons, 1.5 times 10. So I have 15 newtons minus 0.25 times 2 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. And this entire quantity divided by 2 plus 1.5 or 3.5 kilograms. And typing it into my calculator, one second. I'm going to get a value of 2.86. I'll just round that to 2.9 meters per second squared. And if you use 9.81 for gravity, you'd get a slightly lower number. And that whole thing was worth four points. I clean this up a little bit. All right, part D, we want to know the tension in the string connecting to the two blocks. Uh, for that, we can either analyze the block that's descending, or we can block analyze the block that's moving to the right. I'm going to stick with the one that's moving to the right. Uh, it's just basically what I've been dealing with so far. And so, I don't know, maybe to help this out, I'm going to make, I'm going to redraw a free body diagram down here. I've got this block. It's got weight down. It's got a normal force up. It's got a tension that's pulling it to the right, and it's got a friction force that's impeding that motion. I'm looking for tension. I know the overall thing is accelerating as well. So, Sticking with the whole dynamics analysis, I'm going to apply Newton's second law. I'm going to say the net force on the object is MA, which is equal to that rightward force of tension minus that leftward force of friction, which means that tension force is going to be equal to the net acceleration plus the friction force. And so, if I just plug in the numbers and looking, sticking exclusive to this object, not worrying about the little object, I've got the mass of the big object, 2 times its acceleration, 2.9 meters per second squared, minus, or I'm sorry, plus the force of friction, which is mu mg still, uh, or 0.25 times 2 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. And I should get an appropriate value for my tension if I do this. Yeah, I'm getting a value of 10.8 newtons and I believe if you use 9.81, it would be a little bit less than that. And if you analyze the little block instead, you'd get the same value. Uh, D was worth two points. E, we would like to calculate the distance the 1.5 kilogram block descends in 0.4 seconds. Well, at this point in time, it's no longer uh, that dynamics, oops, it's no longer that dynamic setup. In fact, at this point in time, it's just pure kinematics. In fact, you should be able to do E without having done any of the prior steps. So I'm just going to kind of move this off to the side. I'm going to do my E work down here. E. We have an object that's starting from rest. It's accelerating downward. Okay, I lied. You did need to do this because you needed to know its rate of acceleration of 2.9 meters per second squared. Um, we know it is going to take 0.4 seconds, or at least travel for 0.4 seconds for this part of the problem. And we want to know how far it traveled during this segment. I'm going to treat downward as positive, so I don't have to worry about any of my negatives. And I'm going to utilize the longer equation, delta dy is viyt 
plus one half AT squared. And that VIYT is gone at zero. I'm going to solve for delta dy, so it's already isolated. It's just going to be one half of the acceleration, 2.9 times t squared, 0.4 squared. And we will get. A total distance of 0.23 meters, or 23 centimeters. And part E was worth two points. And finally, uh, in the laboratory setting, we did this exact same experiment. We determined the acceleration to be a little bit smaller. Why is that? Don't only just say why, but explain it. Um, there are many, many responses you can give. I'm just going to read a little bit out of the answer key so you can have an understanding yourself. You can say things like the pulley itself has some level of friction in the real life setting. You can't ignore its friction. You can't ignore the mass of the string. You can't ignore, ignore, the, ignore the rotational inertia of the pulley. Uh, maybe the horizontal surface isn't perfectly horizontal. Uh, those are all great explanations as to why, but you need to connect the dot too. You can't just say for example, the pulley is providing friction without actually saying what that does. So I encourage you to say the pulley probably provides some level of friction and the friction of the pulley is going to do negative work on the kinetic energy of the block decreasing its final speed. And use a similar approach for anything that you say. Uh, whatever it is you say is affecting it, don't just say it's affecting it, but explain how it's affecting it. If you do that, you're going to get both points. If you don't explain how, you're probably only going to get the one point. All right, that's it for you.